St Peter's Church in Brighton is one of the hundreds of sacred buildings across the country whose heritage is being saved through careful conservation paid for by charitable donations. Inside Out wanted to know more about the current issues challenging Charities Board of Trustees and how they are managing in the current climate of austerity whilst delivering on the charity's purpose for public benefit. We met up with Lloyd Grossman, Chairman of the Church's Conservation Trust, responsible for the work being undertaken here at St Peter's, to tell us how he first became involved with this trust. I knew about the Church's Conservation Trust from my time as a Commissioner of English Heritage, where obviously I was interested in all aspects of the heritage world. Um, and Liz Forgan and Frank Field, who had both been chairs of the Church's Conservation Trust kept me in touch with what was going on. So as I was reading the, uh, the newsletters and occasionally bumping into them and hearing what was going on, I became more and more interested in the Trust as a charity. Of course, you know, like anyone who arrives in, in this country for the, for the first time, and I hope you know, people who also grow up here, it seemed to me the parish churches were such an important part of the English landscape and townscape historically that uh, you know, it was very important to, to do whatever one could do to protect them. Over your five years as chairman, what responsibilities of the role have emerged as being the most challenging? One of the most interesting things is that it hasn't felt like five years because it is such a fascinating job and it's so different all the time. I think the challenges of, uh, well really for anyone in a similar position are, uh, you know, there are a number of different challenges. One is to make sure that the public understands what your charity is doing, so that ambassadorial function is constantly important. And because there is so much competition, as it were, for people's attention in the charitable world, the communications thing becomes more and more important because you've got to be able to articulate what the what the mission of the charity is in a compelling way. So the need to constantly refine the message and make sure the message is getting across to a very wide number of people from different areas is always, is always important. The other challenge that, that everyone in the charitable sector faces, of course, is funding. As state funding for so many things contracts, it affects all charities and all charities once again are in a highly competitive situation because people only have so much attention to give and only have so much money to give. So all of us in the charitable arena are constantly trying to make a more compelling case for what we do, trying to get people's attention and trying to get their support. That, those are the challenges that, that we all face. And I don't think the Church's Conservation Trust is particularly different from other charities in that respect. The preservation work that goes on here serves as a typical example of the kind of effort and expertise that charity trustees pour into the hundreds of thousands of organisations that make up our voluntary sector. Tell us more about why you believe charity trustees should not be paid. I'm really opposed to paying trustees for charities. You know, we rely, I mean, yes, we have paid staff, but we also rely, all charities rely, on hundreds and thousands of volunteers. And to me, it's absolutely crackers to ask people to give up their time for nothing if trustees are going to be paid. So I, th I think that's one aspect of it. I think it's insulting for volunteers if trustees are paid. Trustees should be volunteers as well. Secondly, you know, this is a time when we are asking trustees to take a much more active role in fundraising and to ask them to go out and ask other people to give money. And I think it is a fundamental conflict to pay trustees if you're then telling them to go out and ask, ask people to donate. So really, you know, trustees should donate their time, they should donate their skills, and on top of that, they should probably make a financial contribution as well. So, I mean, I'm all in favor of trustees giving to the max and not being salaried. I don't see any justification anywhere for any charity to pay its trustees. If you could introduce one rule that would help charities govern themselves, what would it be and why? 
I'm not sure I would introduce a single rule that would necessarily improve the governance of, 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 of charities. Certainly, I think the tax regime could be more encouraging towards philanthropy. I think that would help, help all charities. And what I would suggest to all charities, and I think most of them do this anyway because it's generally good practice, is to remember that they, they are there to accomplish a mission rather than to feed themselves. So the important thing for charities to always bear in mind is what they're there for. A lot, of, a lot of organizations, once they become established, are very in interested in institutional survival. And I would say to anyone in a position like that, just remember you know, the, the, fate, the fate of your individual organization is much less important than the fate of the mission it was set up to accomplish. And I think fundamental to our mission is our belief that our parish churches should once again be the living hearts of communities all over England.